Hello everyone, it's me Uncle John. Today I am going to read S4 4015 Invisible Ink The Mystery of the Missing Doll by Elizabeth Levi. Invisible Ink. Except for his tail, Chip's dog, Mac was invisible. So was Chip. But at least Chip wore clothes. Last summer, Chip and Max were in a cave. They fell into a pool of water. When they came out, they were both invisible. Chip's clothes were invisible too. Some Chip's family, his friends, and almost everyone in Chip's town got used to Chip, but no one except his good friend, Charlene and Justin knew about his invisible clothes. With them, Chip could go totally invisible. Chip kept them in his backpack. Justin had a hearing loss, he, and he could read lip. Looked at things very carefully, often noticed things that others didn't. Charlene was very good at figuring things out. Together, the three of them started Invisible Ink to solve mystery. The right wrongs others don't see. And just for fun, the keys write the note with invisible ink. Chapter 1. Where is that Max? Your Max, shouted Chip. Chip and his friends were going to take Chip's dog to the dog show. But where was he? Suddenly, the TV went on by itself. It was loud. Program the flash across the screen. Max has the remote again, said Chip. There it is, shouted Justin. The remote was floating in the air. Justin jumped at the remote, but he could not get it. The remote flew across the room, followed by a little brown dot. Charlene held out her hand. I've got him, she shouted. She handed the remote to Chip. Bad dog, she said to Max. He may not know how to use the remote control, but he does have a new trick for the dog show, said Chip. Chip put a mitten in a hat, then clapped his hand. The mitten flew out of the hat and across the room. It was followed by the brown wagging dot. That's neat, said Charlene. The judges will love it. But the judges won't be able to see him, said Justin. Chip was sad. You're right. The judges won't give a prize to a dog they can't see. We can die, Mac, said Charlene. We can use food coloring. Charlene mixed the food coloring and Chip put Max in the tub. Brown water flew everywhere. Now Max was visible. Was a deep chocolate brown. I hope he doesn't lick this up. To step up, said Justin. At the park was a huge sign, K9, fun fee, fast. Max whacked his tail. He loved to be with other dogs. Chip, Charlene, and Justin met Mary and Sandy, two girls from the class. Do you have a dog? Justin asked. Mary shook her head. We just came to watch. My father is allergic to dogs, said Sandy. Max's tail wagged. Chip held his leash to get tighter. A huge Doberman pin pincher barked. Watch it, said the boy. He was holding the big dog's leash. Chip pulled Max's leash. It wrapped around Mary's legs and she fell on the big dog. Be careful, said the boy. You will hurt my champion. Mary looked scared. Your dog could have hurt Mary, said Chip. My dog is a purebred, said the boy. And I can see that yours is not. Chip's dog may not be a purebred, but he has a pure heart, said Charlene. My dog is a champion. She always wins, said the boy. She can do anything that your dog can do, but better. Well, this dog can disappear, said Charlene. 
Can your dog do that? While the children talked, the two dogs licked each other, and Max started to disappear. The boy was very surprised. He walked away, dragging his dog behind him. What happened to the dog? A woman shouted. She had bright red hair and wore purple clothes. He is invisible, said Shaolin. Amazing, said the woman. A low growl came from under her cape. A tiny dog with big ears packed down. Amazing, the woman said again. Then she walked away. She is strange, said G Justin. We'll have to die, Max, again, said Chip. I'm hungry, Charlene said. Let's have lunch first. Charlene, Justin, and Chip walked to the food stand. On the way, they passed the snobby boy with his big dog, the strange woman with her little dog, and Sandy and Mary with no dog at all. The children ordered nachos. A tortilla chip with gooey cheese on it dropped to the ground. It's okay, Max. You can eat it, said Chip. But the nacho just lay on the ground. Why isn't Max eating the nacho? Justin asked. Chip chopped on Max's leash. It was a slack. He's not here. A chip shouted. Someone took Max. Chapter 2. Lost one dog you can see. Chief, Justin, and Shaolin searched the park for Max. They called his name again and again, but no little brown tail came wagging. They asked the snobby boy, the strange woman, Sandy and Mary, if they knew where Max could be. They all said no. This is a case for invisible ink, says Shaolin. Right, groaned the chip. We can't put up posters. Lost one dog you can't see. I suppose you will want to write the posters in invisible ink, too. Don't be silly, said Charlene. Justin can make a great poster. Justin was a very good artist. He made posters that showed Max's brown tail. The large red letters announced chip. Charlene and Justin put the signs up all over the park. Justin put one on a tree and noticed another poster nearby. Hey, look at this, he said. The lady was a magician. He pointed to a picture of the woman with the red hair. Amazing Grace read the poster. Called today we do magic shows for birthday parties. Charlene started to write something down on her pad. What are you doing, Chip? What are you doing? Chip asked. Taking her address and phone number, said Charlene. I might want a magician at my next birthday party. By the end of the day, nobody had turned in an invisible dog with the dart of a tail on their way out of the park. Chip, Justin, and Charlene ran into the snobby boy from the dog show. Have you seen our dog, Max, anywhere? Asked Shaolin. He seemed to like your dog. Maybe he followed her. You keep your dog away from my Millie, warned the boy. I don't like her licking all of that food coloring. He tugged on Millie's leash and left. I think he knows where Max is, said Chip. I'm gonna follow him. Chip ran behind the tree. He put on his invisible clothes. Chip's invisibility could come in handy at times like this. Fifty minutes later, Chip returned huffing. Well, I didn't find Max, said Chip, but well, I did find out the boy's name. I heard his mother call for him from her car. William Watson the third. but did you find any clues about Max? asked Justin. Not exactly, said Chip. But I don't trust that William Watson the third. I know he has something to do with Max disappearing. Shaolin frowned. A good detective doesn't jump to conclusion. She's right, said Justin. Just because he wants his dog to win, 
doesn't mean he did it. But if he didn't, as cheap as he put his visible clothes back on, who did? Chapter 3, Amazing Dog Trick. On their way home, the members of Invisible Ink saw Mary. She was carrying a shopping bag from the dog show. I saw your poster, said Mary. Did you find Max yet? No, said Charlene, looking sad. We've looked everywhere for him. It would be amazing if you find him, said Betty. There are so many dogs here, and you can't even see Max. What did you say? Justin asked. Mary turned to face him. She knew Justin could read her lips better if she looked straight at him. I said it would be amazing if you found him, repeated Mary. Amazing, Justin said to himself. Mary looked at him strangely. I've got to go, she said, clutching her shopping bag. I hope you find Max. I don't see what's so amazing, complained Charlene. We haven't found Max and we don't even have any clues. Who'd want an invisible dog? Justin asked slowly. Use your head, Chip scratched his head and thought. Suddenly, Charlene's eyes lit up. Amazing Grace, she shouted, rise, said Justin. A magician would have a million uses for an invisible dog. I'll bet she has Max, but how can we find that for sure, asked Charlene. Let's go to her house and pretend that we want to hire her for a birthday party, said Chip. He turned to Charlene, you have her address, right? Charlene took out a pad. She had used a special invisible ink pen filled with lemon juice to write the address. We need something warm so we can read it, said Justin. He ran back to the park and bought a hot chocolate at the refreshment stand. Charlene held the paper over the steam from the cup. As soon as the address appeared, they were off. Amazing Grace lived in a very strange house. It was painted pink and had shutters with blue stars. Charlene rang the doorbell. Amazing Grace answered the door, carrying a chihuahua and a shopping bag of dog food from the show. Yes, said the woman. We're having a birthday party, said Chip, and we saw your poster in the park. Can you do tricks with dogs in your magic show? Imagine Grace laughed as she invited them in. Can I do tricks with dogs? Watch this, she said. Malin, fetch. The little dog jumped on Charlene's shoulder and pulled the quarter out from behind her ear. Well, said Charlene, how did you teach him to do that? A good magician never reveals her secret, said Grace, smiling. Now, when are you planning to have this party? Before Charlene could answer, Justin interrupted. May I have that, he asked, pointing to the shopping bag on the floor. The magician smiled at him. She took out several cans of dog food from the bag and turned it inside out. Whoops, it's not empty, said Grace. She pulled out a bunch of paper flowers and handed them to Justin. That was great, said she. Thanks, said Justin, as he returned the flower. But I just want the bag. Thanks again, he shouted as he ran out of the house. Chip and Charlene followed. What's gotten into you? asked Charlene. Why did you want that bag? There's no time to explain, said Justin. I think I know who took Max. We've been barking up the wrong tree. Chapter 4. Canine Clues. At last, a real clue, Justin said. Pointing to the shopping bag, the words Debbie Delicious Dog Food were printed on the side. We have sent a shopping book before. We have, said Charlene and Chip together. Justin nodded. This is the same shopping bag that Mary had. Mary doesn't have a dog. She has a salamander. Why would she buy dog food for a salamander? Because she has Max, exclaimed Charlene. Exactly, declared Justin. Charlene studied down the street. 
Come on, let's go to Mary's house. Well, said Jesse, we have to have a plan. We don't have time for the plan. The TV is getting dark. I have to find Max. They went to Mary's house and rang the bell. Mary came to the door. Hi, guys, she said. Any luck finding Max? No, said Justin, spreading the shopping bag on the floor. He picked it up and lifted out a can of dog food. Why did you buy dog food? asked Justin. Uh, I, uh, a friend asked me to buy it for her new dog. Mary stammered, uh, turning red. We think you bought it for the invisible dog. Charlene blotted out. Justin rolled his eyes. He knew that a good detective doesn't accuse a suspect until all of the evidence is in. Max is in here, said Mary. You can search the house if you want to. Charlene and Justin headed for the den, but Chip sank down on a chair. He knew Max wasn't there. If Max were there, he would have come running. I may never see Max again, said Chip. Well, sorry, Mary, said Chip. Justin, we shouldn't have blamed you. I'm sure Max is all right, said Mary. I'm not. Chip says, standing up, I guess I should go home. For a moment, he looked hopeful. Maybe Max is waiting there for me. Good idea, said Mary, trying to cheer him up. Chip raced down the street, with Justin and Charlene following close behind. But when they got to Chip's house, Chip's house, there was no wagging tail. There was no Max at all. Chapter 5, Lost and Found. The next day, Chip was almost too unhappy to go to the dog show. But you have to go, says Charlene. Max just must show up there when they got there. As always, Charlene was hungry. Come on, she said. Let's go get a hot dog. Who would eat a hot dog at a time like this? Asked Chip, just inside. You go, Charlene. I'll stay with Chip. Bring me back a hot dog, too. Charlene bought the hot dogs. Stopped at a souvenir stand on the way back. William Watson the third strutted by. With Millie at his side, did your friend ever find his dog, he asked. Charlene shook her head, too bad. William said, I guess he's a no-show, that's mean, said Charlene. You wouldn't like it if someone took Millie. William Watson III looked a little embarrassed. embarrassed. He picked it up, picked up a stuffed rabbit. When he squeezed it, it barked. I bet Millie would love fetching this said William. Hey, I'm buying that, said Mary's friend, Sandy. She grabbed the toy and paid for it. She sure is in a hurry, said William. Charlene stared at Sandy's bag, taking out a fountain pen. She, wa she wrote on a napkin in invisible ink. He gave it to William Watson III. Will you run and give this to Chip and Justin, she asked. William looked at the napkin. It's blank. Please do it, Charlene begged. Why should I do your favor? William Watson the third asked. Think how you'd feel if someone took Millie, said Charlene. I would hate it, said William Watson the third. He took the paper, take this to them too, said Charlene as she gave him the hot dogs. I've got to run, they all, they'll know what to do, Charlene took off. After Sandy, William Watson III brought the napkin and hot dogs to Justin and Chip. What's that? asked Justin, taking the napkin. Another joke? Oh, your friend Charlene asked me to give it to you, said William. She said you didn't know what to do. He handed Chip the hot dogs. I hope you find your dog. Thanks, said Chip. Thanks a lot. William smiled a little and walked away with Millie following close behind. Justin held the napkin over the head of the hot dog. The words come to Sandy's house right away. Up here. Let's go, shouted Justin. Chip was already ahead of him. When they got to Sandy's house, Charlene was hiding behind the tree. Do you see Max? Chip whispered urgently. Charlene shook her head. No, but listen. I don't hear anything, said Justin. But Chip heard a bark. It is Max. 
he said excitedly. He ran to the front door before Justin could stop him. Sandy's father answered the bell. Excuse me, said Chip, trying to be polite, but I think you may have my dog. We don't allow dogs in a home, said Sandy's dad. He sneezed and rubbed at his red eyes. I'm allergic to them. Suddenly a bark came from inside the house. Sandy came to the door, carrying the stuff rabbit. Uh, she had bought at the show. It's my new toy, she said. It's a rabbit that barks. Sandy's father sneezed again. I seem to be allowed to give them to toy rabbits. They bark like dogs. Uh, Chip looked discouraged. Another false alarm. Just as the door was closing, Chip heard another bark. Uh, Chip ran to Justin and Charlene. I know Max's bark. That is him in there somewhere. I got to go invisible. You and Charlene ring the doorbell again. What am I going to say? asked Justin. I say anything, said Chip quickly changing into his invisible claws. Just give me a chance to get get inside. Charlene and Justin rang the bell. Doorbell, hello, can I help you with something? Sandy's mother asked them. Oh, uh, we are collecting money for animal rescue, Charlene said quickly. Oh, uh, we find lost animal. Sandy's mother smiled. How nice, I guess some change. When they... While they waited by the open door, Chip slipped inside. Moments later, a streak of a brown tail came flying out of the house. What was that? asked Sandy's mother. Sandy ran down the stairs and out of the house. Excuse us, said Charlene. She and Justin ran after Sandy. Chip was waiting behind the tree. A little brown dog walked back and forth in, ch in Chip's arm. Good boy, said Chip, hugging Max tightly. Good dog. Sandy heard Max barking and saw the brown dog. I'm sorry, she said. I just took him as an experiment. I thought maybe my dog would be allergic to an invisible dog. I asked Mary to buy some dog food for Max yesterday, and then I was going to bring him back. But Mary told me how worried you all were. I was scared that you would be angry with me. But honestly, I would have brought it back to you tonight. By then, he would have missed the whole duck show, said Charlene. Chip looked down at the wagging brown dog. Brown dog, he doesn't have a chance. The judges can't see him, and there's no time to use food coloring on him now. Oh, wait a minute, said Charlene. The Max can pull a rabbit out of a head. He can do what? asked Chip. Charlene explained her plan. Chip giggled and looked at Sandy. We'll have to borrow your stuffed rabbit. He said, uh, of course, said Sandy. It's the least I can do. They ran back to the dog show. Uh, Chip walked into the wing with Max to everyone else. He looked as if she was walking a pretend, pretend dog on a trick wish. What is this? asked the judge. This is my dog, Max, said Chip. The judge knelt down, his hand became wet. It's mixed slobber, the kisses on his knuckles. Oh, it is a dog, said judge, and he's officially entered, said another judge, looking at her list. It is highly unusual, said one judge to the other. They, they read the book. There's no rule against invisible dogs, said the first said judge. Max trotted smartly by Chip's side, healing perfectly when Chip stopped. Justin, Charlene, Sandy, and Mary all cheered loudly. William was in the third, even gave Chip a thumbs up a sign. Chip put his baseball cap down in the center of the ring. Presenting the amazing Max, he cried. He clapped his hands, quick as a bling, brown dot shot across the ring and hovered over the head. Abracadabra, shouted Chip. The rabbit jumped out of the head and floated through the air, landing at the feet of the judges. Max and Chip won first prize in the silly dog tree category. After the show, Chip carried his blue ribbon over to his friends. I guess you have 
I guess you just can't keep an invisible dog down, he said proudly. Your dog is amazing, said a familiar voice. Chip turned to see Amazing Grace and her chihuahua. She handed Chip a business card. Perhaps we can do business together, she said. Chip reached into his pocket and he handed her an official invisible ink card. It is blank, said Amazing Grace. It's not blank. It's invisible, said Charlene. Invisible ink at your service, added Justin. Amazing Grace took the card and smiled. Amazing, she whispered at the end.